Okay, so what we just did, we call that singing worship or playing worship music. Um, if you've ever been in a moment in your life where you felt like, I just don't know what to listen to, or sometimes music just hits right away for me, that's worship. Whenever I'm, you know, I don't need to spend any more time with my friends, or sometimes my family just doesn't understand me, sometimes I feel like God's the only one who gets me, and so when I listen to worship, I just let that moment sink in, I feel so at peace, and so we want to offer that each and every week at 678, a chance for you to go look, grow a little bit closer to God through worship, and then now diving into tonight's message, okay? Quick question, has anyone ever asked God to do something just to see if he's real? Yeah? Has anyone done, like, have any of you ever gone into a classroom, no idea you had a test, and say, God, if you're real, I'm going to get an A on this test. Prove it. And like, you just, you hope for the best. Or maybe you pray, God, please, if, if you're real, please don't let my parents find out about that one thing. Like, you know you all prayed that prayer before you don't have to say what it was. But um, I definitely have found myself in those situations. And today, we're going to look at a story where these people are experiencing the life of Jesus, and they tell Jesus, the Son of God, to his face, if you're real, prove it. And I think the way he responds to them should encourage us with how he'll respond to us when we ask that same question. But first, I want to do a little test. You all have a sheet of paper and a pen, or at least you should. Uh, throughout the message, I'm going to be speaking. There will be things on the screen. If you want to take notes, jot anything down, I encourage you to do so. Um, but we're going to do a, a little game real quick, okay? I'm going to show you a picture. Tech booth is the first picture. Don't put it up just yet. Don't put it Nope. This is the message. We can play this again. You guys can use some learning, okay? Um, so here's the thing. I'm going to put a picture on the screen. And all I want, you're going to have about 15 to 20 seconds. I want no one to say a single word. I want you to write down everything you see. I want to see how observant you are. Everything from the colors you see to the objects you see, the location you see, anything that sticks out to you at all, I need you to write it down and no one can verbally say anything. Is everyone on the same page? Do you understand? 100%. All right. Okay, are you guys all ready? Yeah. All right, Zach, can you throw the first picture up on the screen pretty please? Do not, good job. I just need you to write 15 seconds, 15 to 20 seconds, write everything you see. Write any color, any object, any item. Uh, write anything that you can see down. You've got 10 more seconds. 10 more seconds. Five, four, three and a half, 97, 62, 43, and one. All right, you can take the picture down. Now, everyone look at this long, tall, lanky looking fellow. Who wants to tell me at least one thing they observed? Cole. Bacteria. Are you telling me you need a shower? What do you mean by bacteria? There has to be bacteria. There's gotta be. You are looking at the micro scale, right? It's gotta be bacteria, yes. Green. Very green, right? That was more of a wave, yes. Air. Like oxygen. Air. You saw air? Yeah. You must be, you must have the best vision in the world. Yes. Say that again? Can you put the second picture up? How many of you guys noticed this little chameleon? Raise your hand if you noticed that. Did you? I would guess a handful of you are thinking, how in the heckin' gosh, because that's how you speak, how did I miss that, right? But it blended in absolutely perfect. It's a fair question because it's quite literally right in front of you. But you take the picture down, real quick, think about this. Isn't it strange when you miss something that is right in front of you? There are these caves. I went to a group in North Carolina, I uh, went to college in Tennessee, and there are these caves that you can pay people to go down and you get a tour guide to walk into these caves. And I kid you not, they have these lights so guide the path. But when they get there, they turn the lights off and the guy's just holding a, holding a little lighter. I, so the cave, if we were to stand in the middle of this room, pitch black, dark, they would hold a lighter, and it would light up everything, because there's it's just a little light, but you would see everything. And one of the weirdest things, sometimes they would turn off the lighter, and you would be so freaked out, because you know how, like, if you're 
How many of you like stumble in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom? You know where the bathroom is, but you just stub your toe, you're hitting your head in the middle or whatever. You can, it takes a little while for your eyes to adjust. It was so dark in those caves. Literally they told us to do this. I could not see my hand at all. Like it was darkest of dark that I've ever seen. And what's so cool is that today we're gonna look at a story to where Jesus appears to these people, to his friends, to people in public, and he's saying, you're looking at me as if I'm not even here. And I wanna challenge you, sometimes in your life, things will happen to where you're gonna wonder, where's God, why is this happening, and if God really loves me, why don't I feel it? And he's gonna be saying, I've been here the whole time, okay? So if you look at the screen, this is Mark 8, 11 through 18. Now, Mark is one of a couple books in the Bible, and these books tell the story of Jesus' life, okay? So I'm going to read, and it says this. The Pharisees, everyone say Pharisees. Pharisees. Pharisees are these people who really knew the law. They knew what was right. They knew what was wrong, but they didn't really know Jesus, okay? The Pharisees came and began to argue with Jesus, demanding of him a sign of heaven to test him. Sighing deeply in his spirit, Jesus said, Why does this generation demand a sign? Jesus says, Truly I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. And then he left them. He got back into the boat and he went to the other side. Now, the disciples had forgotten to take bread and had only one loaf with them in the boat. And so Jesus gave them strict orders. Watch out. Beware the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they were discussing amongst themselves that they did not have any bread. But then this last part, aware of this, he said, why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Do you understand or comprehend? Do you have heart and hearts? Do you have eyes and not see? Do you have ears and not hear? And do you not remember? Now, how many of you, whether it's right now or in your school classes, a teacher has been looking at you right in all three eyes and they're telling you what to do. Two seconds go by and you say, what did you say? How many of you have just completely missed sometimes things that people have said to you? How many of you have completely missed things that were right in front of you, just like the chameleon? The problem, the problem with these people is that Jesus is doing all these miracles in front of them. But what's the one thing they ask from him? Can you give me a sign? Can you prove it? And Jesus is like, that's all I've been doing. And it's not good enough. And so problem number one, the people can't see what Jesus is doing right in front of their eyes. Jesus, they cannot see what Jesus is doing right in front of their eyes. Now, if you look back at verse 11, look on the screen, it says the Pharisees came and began to argue with him, demanding of him a sign from heaven. Now, what's interesting about this is that in the Bible, there's this very famous story to where there's thousands of people on this hill and they're getting really hungry. How many of you have been angry before? So if you're hungry, oh my gosh, you got some words coming out that you didn't even know you knew. You got some people that you're just going after because you got some grumbling on your belly. There's thousands of people getting hangry on the hill. And Jesus, with very little food, feeds all of them. What's interesting is that while they're eating and eating and eating, they're the people who go up to Jesus and say, so what are you going to do to prove that you can actually do miracles? After he already did what? A miracle. Sometimes you and I, we will complain, ask, or wonder, Jesus, what are you doing? Why won't you do this? And guess what we're missing? The fact that he's moving in our lives each and every day. Here's a very short list of a few things that Jesus had done. Jesus had healed a blind guy. He healed a paralyzed somebody who was paralyzed. He walked on water during a severe storm. And then he calmed the storm. He resurrected a dead girl. He healed a woman. He fed thousands of people. And the list goes on and on. Actually, the story that we're looking at happened, like I said, happened directly after the feeding of the 4,000. Now, I want to keep reading to you. This is Mark 8, 12 through 13. Look at this screen. It says, sighing in his spirit. This is how Jesus responds. He said, why? Why do you want a sign? Why does this generation demand a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. And then he left them got back in the boat, and went to the other side. And here's something I want to point out to you. This next point, the Pharisees, they were unwilling. Everyone say unwilling. The Pharisees were unwilling to see what Jesus is doing. And the reason why I like the word unwilling is because it doesn't say they were unable. They knew Jesus. They saw Jesus. They experienced Jesus. They were able to see it, but they were unwilling. 
they were unwilling. How many of you, how many of you are unwilling to do your chores? How many of you are unwilling to do your homework? How many of you are unwilling to listen to your parents? Like, you have the capacity, you have the ability, and guess what? A majority of the things that you complained about as a teenager would decrease so much if you just did what you could. But what's interesting about Jesus is he's saying, I'm right here. You don't have to wonder as much. You don't have to worry as much. You don't have to be as sad as you are. I am right here. And that's what's so interesting. And the thing is that you don't have to look far in your life to see the way that God can move. There are three pictures I want to show you of just unreal beauties all across the world. Okay, Here's the first one. In, uh, where, where is it? It's in China. Have you ever heard of the Rainbow Mountains? Yeah. No, you haven't. If you have, you should get a tattoo of it on your forehead. Great idea. Don't tell your parents I told you. Tell them the person next to you did. All right, if we can put the picture up, I believe these are the Rainbow Mountains. This is not a Fruit Loop Mountain or a Fruity Pebble Mountain. These are real mountains to where the soil, the grass, everything about it is truly this remarkable. Those are actual Rainbow Mountains. And I'm sure a lot of you didn't know that those existed. Let's look at another example. You may have heard of this one, actually. In Iceland, there's this thing called the Blue Lagoon. How many of you heard of that? Blue Lagoon, that is one of my goals. I want to go there. If you guys want to go on a field trip to Iceland, raise your hand. Then you should sign up for your school because we're going to do field trips. We can make some trips, though. Uh, Techu, can you go to the next picture? If it's geeking out, it's okay. All right, this is the Blue Lagoon. All right, absolute, majestic, unbelievable view. So cool. And then there's one more. This is called the Iguazu? I-G-U-A-Z. Iguazu Falls in Argentina. Like, that is just so... How many of you have been to a massive waterfall before? Like, where you could hear it from miles away. Can everyone look at me real quick? I said look, not talk. Shh. Can everyone look at me real quick? There are, going to be, there are going to be things in your life that you're not quite sure of. There are going to be things in your life that you feel and you try to process, where you try to wonder, if God was real, this wouldn't really happen, or I wouldn't feel this way. But when you see beautiful things like this, or creations, or if you look at yourself in the mirror and you see how complex you are, if you ever think of the human eye or the brain or just how you are as a person, you will understand that there is an absolute magnificent creator behind you being you. And when you find yourself questioning, God, where are you? You can simply take a step back, look in the mirror, or look around and just see, there's no way this all happened by chance. There are so many beautiful examples of God being real and working in your life. And that's what Jesus is saying to the Pharisees and people. He's saying, you're wanting me to do this, that, and that without acknowledging how I've created you, how I've loved you, how I've died for you. So if you're ever doubting yourself, if you're ever wondering, God, where are you, Rod? I feel this way. You can always focus on that. There's one, I'm not going to do the last slide. There's one story. When I was your age, how many of you hate going to the doctor? The only reason I ever kind of enjoyed going to the doctor is because they had these magazines that I could always like, try to figure out all the bases and stuff beforehand, and I would get bored, so I would just do all that. And I remember in this one specific magazine, I was reading this article. And the article is titled, How to Know Your Parents Love You, which is a terrible article title for a teenager to read because who knows who's writing it. But get this, everyone look. The article was titled, How to Know Your Parents Love You. And it talked about whether you had this, whether you've done this, or whether you've been to that. And as I was reading it, I was sitting next to my mom, and I found myself getting really sad. It's like, Mom, why haven't... Like, we go to the same cheap little... They, like vacation every year. It's like a two-day trip to the beach every year. Mom, we never go out to eat at dinner. Mom, we never do this. We never, I'm like, do you love me? I've never seen someone get ready to smack their kids so fast. I was asking her these questions, and do you know what she said? She said we weren't able to do those things because I was too busy driving you to every single soccer trip now. We weren't able to do those things because of all the soccer jerseys that I bought you. We weren't able to do that because of this. And she listed everything. And here's the thing. When it comes to faith, when it comes to God, you will see what you're looking for. If you want to be disappointed and you want to make up excuses for not feeling God, they will be right there. 
But if you take the time to notice how God has been working in your life, how he has created you and how he loves you, there will be just as much proof if you take the time and the willingness, like the people in Jesus' day weren't, take the willingness to see, this is how God's moving in my life. This is how much he loves me. And guess what? The beauty of all of that is up to your ability to stop, breathe, and consider. These people, they didn't even think. They were just complaining to Jesus. And in your age, complaining is very easy. Which actually is my very, very last point. For every complaint, how many of you complain a lot? Yeah, let's be real. Get this, for every complaint, there's a blessing that you can actually be thankful for. For everything that you wish you could do or are upset that you haven't done, there's a roof over your head that you didn't have to worry about. There's a meal that you never had to worry about. There's a family that loves you even though they may ground you because they love you. There's, there's so many blessings in your life and sometimes you complain way more than we are thankful, okay? So when you take that time to see the ways that God's worked in your life, you have a lot less to complain about and a lot more to be thankful for, all right? Now, I'm gonna pray. And you all are gonna stay nice and seated. I'm gonna divide you into groups. Sound good? Then you're going to have some time for pizza, dodgeball, water slide. Pray, groups, grub, defeat. Sound good? All right, let's pray. Let's pray. God, we are so thankful for you. We're thankful for the way that you move through our lives. God, even though there are things that we struggle with, things that we think, things that we're not sure of, we're thankful that you are always there. And God, whenever we doubt that, whenever we're not sure of what you're doing or how you're moving in our lives, let us just take a second to look around and be thankful for the things that you provided that we so easily overlook. God, we love you so much and we thank you for Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen.